Welcome to I'm Fighting in Thailand, the best news and analysis covering the economics and infrastructure of Muay Thai. I'm Matt Lucas, journalist, commentator, and ex-Muay Thai fighter. Make stronger fighters, make stronger people. Today we will be talking to Andrew Parnum, Willie Whipple, Angela Chang, and Francis and Boom Watanatan. Yeah, as part of our series on COVID-19. This is the second episode in the series. Uh, as always, if you'd like to reach me, you can follow me on Instagram, mattlucasbkk, or email me at a period matt period lucas at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find me via my website, www.matt-lucas.com. Uh, thanks to everyone that supported me so far, uh, sharing the podcast, laboring reviews. If you'd like to leave a review, that would be super helpful. You can do so on the iTunes store. Uh, I'd like to personally thank a few people, Vinny Scotto, Patrick Rivera, Dave Brooks, Sean Madden, Waddell, Delano, and Chris Tran for helping me out with my broken camera. Uh, it's up and running again, and I'm doing a lot of things with it. Uh, I recently was able to edit a video on Ajahn Rex, which was shared on a few pages. Uh, my own Muay Thai Gram, Knock Muay Legends, is a nice review of uh, Rex's life, uh, particularly through the lens of Brian Dobler, uh, his good friend and uh, co-worker. Uh, also, after years of hard work, studying and being in the game, I decided to publish uh, Muay Thai Encyclopedia, uh, I'm Fighting in Thailand, a guide to the, mother, to the sport in the motherland. Um, the clear guide goes over scoring, matchmaking, picking a gym, fight styles, gambling, and more. There's interviews with people like S- Michael Savas, Willie Whipple, Angela Chang, Lisa Brilli, and others. Um, you can get it off of Amazon if you'd like, uh, both in print and as an e-copy. Also, thanks to my sponsors, Knock Moy Legends, for their continued support of the show. They create some great Muay Thai apparel with portions of the proceeds going back to the legends they celebrate. All the superstars have been paid for their images as well. You can check out their gear at www.knockmoylegends.com. Uh, you can use On Fighting to get 15% off your order. Um, thanks as always personally to Patrick Rivera for helping me get the show started. He's uh, been working the Muay Thai business community still, really trying to uh, help people transition into potential online revenue sources um, along with his own academies. Uh, It seems like right now a lot of people are using uh, Zoom, which is a group messaging platform. Um, So you can have a lot of people in the uh, message or in the group and community at the same time and then one person basically leads a class Um, so a a lot of people are doing that there's some gyms in America that are using apps like uh, Daniel Brandt's gym uh, Daniel and Desiree Brandt's gym uh, Dan's gym in Mesa, Arizona and also um, Michael Chase Corley's gym in the States uh, Heritage Muay Thai is also using an app Uh, So it's interesting to see how gyms are handling this and, of course, uh, fighters. Uh, There's been a pretty good story on some of the economics of Thailand um, on a site called Disrupt.co. It particularly tells about a young, uh, older woman who's 56 years old, uh, sort of on the tertiary of the economy, And just uh, the uh, COVID-19 really wrecking her sort of chance for income. Uh, She's making three to four hundred baht a day selling snacks at one of the schools near her gym. So, you know, obviously the um, fighters generally come from very impoverished neighborhoods and are returning to Isan potentially or their homelands where there's a lot of precarity and economically everything is un- unstable and there's not a lot of uh, health infrastructure right now. So definitely my heart goes out to a lot of these people. Um, obviously, it's a hard time for everyone, but, you know, economically, you know, speaking, the poor generally have it the worst off, the poor and the undocumented 
Um, so, but I wanted to have a look at our industry still. Uh, so we have Andrew Parnham returning from Sydney, Australia, uh, and he talks a bit about his gym. Uh, Angela Chang talks about her time out here. She's been out here for about four years uh, trying to pursue her career. Willie Whipple uh, out of Simanchai has been here for five years, so quite some time. And of course, uh, Francis and Boom have had the gym out in Putai Song. Uh, in between uh, Korat or by Korat um, province, right in the heart of Isan. Um, and their gym is mainly for children. Um, There's some adults that fight out there, and their star, Lanyamo uh, Warwatana, um, fights regularly now at Raja Demner on the Pet Indie show. Uh, speaking of Pet Indie, uh, Bo Pet Indie and a few others from the promotion have handed out uh, about 10,000 baht uh, to each gym where they've had uh, fighters come out of. So about 45 uh, or 450,000 baht, five, a half a million baht has been uh, given to uh, gyms that have had fighters on their promotion, which is a really nice thing to do, obviously, especially in a time where that money is really, really going to help um, the fighters and potentially the gyms keep on their lights until uh, this is over. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to continue to do the series uh, just because it gets maybe a little depressing and a little old, uh, but I do want to keep... Uh, uh, everyone up to date about things that are happening in the country. Um, so without further ado, the interviews with the fighters and gym owners. Uh, thank you so much, Angela, for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're so, so bright and cheery. <laughs> Um, so, um, you're living in Bangkok now, obviously, um, you came back after a stint, a sh very short stint in the States. Um, did you fight before, uh, uh, after you came back? No, I haven't fought at all. My last fight was in January and shortly after that I went, uh, back stateside for a month and a half. And then I came back, uh, the very beginning of March and I was trying to get back in shape and get some fights, but... Um, you know, COVID-19 happened and then uh, slowly they started canceling all the shows and all the fights and then it went from uh, very limited shows to just televised shows and now there's no Muay Thai at all. Yeah, were you booked for any shows before the cancellations? Um, I wasn't booked yet, but then there were a few promoters calling my trainer and my, my trainer was trying to set something up for me and then they were literally just beginning to talk about confirming dates and like weight classes when um, we were th when uh, he was pretty much told that the army forbid those promoters from having any more shows. Yeah, what, what shows were the were they the super champ ones? Um, not super champ, although uh, the promoter had had asked Molnit. Molnit wanted me to fight on a small show first before mm -hmm. uh, fighting on TV again. So then it was going to be like a five round fight, uh, probably at a temple fair or something mm -hmm. like that. And then the next fight would have been um, for Channel 8. But uh, yeah, we like I said, he got to talking about it and then the promoter called back was like, nope, can't do it. Um, so beyond the fight cancellations, how has the virus impacted daily life for you? Um, well, now in most of Thailand, I would say, um, all gyms are mandated by the government to close. So there's no training whatsoever. Um, so I went from training twice a day to pretty much I'm not training at all. All I'm doing is I'm running in the mornings and then I do like a home workout. Maybe some, on some days I'll do two home workouts, uh, because I have the time. So it's just the main difference is the amount of free time I have and it's driving me a little crazy. <laughs> Um, what are you doing to try and make up for this free time that you suddenly have? Um, I'm trying to n not just sit on my phone or just sit in front of the computer and watch Netflix. I'm trying to be productive, um, 
So I run a blog called Mui Ying, um, which talks about Muay Thai um, in Thailand and also uh, covers some like female fights and stuff like that. Um, so I've been trying to work on that blog a lot, with it, but it's tough because right now there's no fights going on. So at the moment, I've been just trying to like brainstorm ideas for future articles and also working on the current uh, drafts that I had up, um, including ones for like... Thai language and like uh, gym culture, gym etiquette in Thailand. Um, and obviously, you've been at Sitsong Pinong for a number of years. Um, how and you are quite close with a lot of the trainers and fighters. How has it impacted them? Well, right now, all the trainers, you know, they're out of work. So most of them, they have gone back to their hometowns if they're not from Bangkok. Most of them are not from Bangkok. Uh, I believe there's only one or two trainers that are, are actually from Bangkok, so they're just staying home with their families and their pets and whatnot. Um, in terms of the fighters, um, they've gone back to their hometowns as well, or they're staying in Bangkok chilling with their girlfriends or whatever, but they're definitely not hanging around the gym just waiting for it to open back up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, you talked a little bit about the cancellations. Um, how do you think this is impacting your career as a fighter? Um, well, what I'm about to say, I feel like it speaks for all fighters. Um, not being active as a fighter, especially when you you live in Thailand, um, it can have some consequences such as one, when you start fighting again, uh, you're not as sharp as you once were. Um, not fighting also means that you're not, you might not be as motivated to keep being active and staying in shape. Or for some people, it even extends to like uh, eating healthy um, and doing and putting the proper things into your body. Um, but also, a lot of it just has to do with like you know me being someone who moved here to train and fight. Now I can't do either of those things. It's also kind of giving me an existential crisis of some sorts because now I'm just like well if I'm not training and, I, and I'm not fighting not because I choose not to but because I just simply can't and no one can and I and for the greater good I feel like it's the the right thing to do by the way um it's like what why am I even here when I what am I doing with my time how long is this gonna last like uh what am I gonna do with my life after this yeah I mean like this is it's a little bit of a um... A normal crisis for most fighters to have um, towards the end of their career. Uh, what's happening now, it seems like, is uh, fighters are having the right now, no matter what stage of their career they're in, is you know we no one really knows how long this is going to last and what the you know potential economic situation is going to be when and if things clear up. Um, speaking of economics, though, how has now fighting and I guess the virus in general impacted you economically, financially, and maybe some of the people you know immediately as well? Um, financially, not fighting. Uh, fighting definitely gave me some pocket money on the side. Being a female fighter in Thailand, I never made like a whole lot to begin with. But when I did fight, especially on TV, it did give me some extra money extra spending money or you know I can buy a new pair of running shoes with it or two um but I would say the virus as a whole it's impacted a lot of people in that they've lost their jobs um I've lost my main source of income after the month of March due to sales just not happening and this is directly related to the virus it's not because of anything else so me, like many other people, uh, we're all looking for remote jobs or online work. So there's a huge number of applicants and just not enough jobs out there for people to do remotely. Um, I know one of the things you're doing right now is you're doing uh, exercise planning and some personal training with people uh, through online resources. How is that going? And can you talk a little bit about that? So after I got word that um, I was going to lose my main source of income, I had to look for other avenues to get more income. Um, even though I wasn't going to be doing much aside from buying food <laughs> and paying for my rents uh, and other bills. <coughs> um, uh, so what I did when I went to the U.S. Uh, was I taught seminars in privates. And for me, that was 
a pretty consistent method of money. I every week I had at least five or six privates, um, and some days I even had like five privates in just that one day. So then I was like, okay, well, a lot of people are home, so why don't I try to do something for them at home? So I started to offer uh, live training sessions via Zoom or Skype, and also personal custom programming in terms of um, Muay Thai workouts, strength and conditioning workouts, uh, stuff like that. So the people who wanted to work out home but didn't really have any direction to go about it in terms of doing it themselves, I offered a service for it. Um, I have, I had a, a few people that took me up on the offer for the custom training plans. Um, unfortunately, I only got to hold one live training session. I guess right now, a lot of people are trying to stay afloat, um, not just financially, but also health-wise. So I understand that not everyone could just, you know, dedicate one hour of their day. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some of your goals for yourself now? I know you aren't immediately going to jump ship uh, from Thailand back to Queens. I think some of my immediate goals are just to um, maybe finish some of the side projects that I've been meeting to finish on and start some of the side projects that I've been meeting to start on and also learn some new skills like uh past two weeks I've been watching tutorials on how to use Adobe Illustrator so I'm trying to learn new skills and make something out of this virus situation with all the time I have because I mean I could just as easily just sit down and watch the newest Netflix series but personally there's only so much Netflix I could watch I need to do <laughs> something that's going to uh, mentally stimulate me like become the next TikTok superstar <laughs> yeah actually I've been <laughs> I downloaded TikTok uh, again, <laughs> again, and um, it's forced me to start learning some uh, dance moves, which I'm terrible at. <laughs> no, you just need a little practice. Um, so what do you think the long-lasting impacts of the virus and what's going on is going to be? Uh, well, I think there's going to be, uh, the whole world's going to go into a recession, if not a depression. Uh, there's going to be a lot of financial burdens for everyone in the world. Uh, if you look at what's happening right now, the situation in Thailand in terms of Muay Thai, I wrote a really long article on Muay Ying uh, regarding it. And some things I included were the consequences of this virus and its impact uh, economically and socially. And some of the things that I included uh, in terms of that were also how... Uh, like, you know, the trainers, the fighters, the gyms, they're not having any income now because there are no fights, uh, no one's allowed to train. So even if their roster fighters can't fight, um, a lot of them, uh, a lot of the gyms that were making money off foreign guests, they can't even make money off foreign guests. So it's a, it's a very bleak outlook at the moment if this virus situation continues for at least another two or three months. But I think it's very probable that that's what's going to happen if um, the entire world and everyone doesn't start taking some responsibility in terms of social distancing, like washing their hands and, uh, you know, isolating themselves after they travel and stuff like that. Like, it's it's not just for your own benefit, but it's for the benefit of really the entire world. Yeah, I know that. I know a lot of people from the Northeast, and I definitely feel for them, especially considering that's uh, the brunt of where Muay Thai fighters come from. You know, a lot of people are returning home to a place where there's not necessarily the greatest healthcare infrastructure, and then no healthcare, then no work, you know, and there's drugs and alcohol. Yeah, and, and a lot of these people, they also live uh, in cramped quarters. Like, it could be, like, one home or, like, one large room, and it could be, like, it's anywhere like cluster, from like basically. yeah it could be their their family plus the plus the mother's you know the was the mother-in-law side of the family or you know the i don't know the brothers yeah. the mother's brother side of the family like they all live together um in a lot of these villages um and they share everything as well it's an it's in thai culture to share a lot of things and um but unfortunately right now the whole virus situation um sharing things isn't the most hygienic way of doing things and also it's it's just making the situation worse yeah um so just wrapping things up was there anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about 
Um, or like anything you'd want to say in closing? I, I, I think uh, the only thing I want to say in closing is please do your research. Please only repost and cite things from reputable sources so, such as uh, the World Health Organization, the CDC. Um, do not quote other social media people <laughs> and say, oh, they said this, so it must be true. Or share conspiracy theories about how this is not a real thing and how it's just a distraction. There are people dying from this. And um, I think it's our responsibility to do our part. And even though it's really hard for a lot of us athletes right now, not being able to move and not be able, you know, as fighters, we want to hit things, we want to train. It's, it's the socially responsible thing to do um, to really distance ourselves from other people so this doesn't get any worse than how it already is. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much, Andrew, for coming on the show again today. Absolute pleasure, Matt. Good to speak to you again, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so there's been some changes for you in the last two weeks. Uh, what has changed for you? What's the status of yourself and your gym in Australia? Uh, so we are, in effect, shut down. Um, the government passed you know, some new laws around the whole social distancing piece and gyms are effectively closed um, we're no longer permitted to train indoors and that goes for all indoor sporting complexes and gymnasiums and whatnot just like a lot of other countries um, but there are some things we're still allowed to do so I think the last time we spoke we could train indoors but we couldn't do a couple of things so now we can we can still train outdoors uh, Sydney's not on full lockdown yet um, you can train outdoors. You've got to have a reason to go outdoors, which is exercise. Uh, PTs, personal trainers can take sessions with clients as long as they adhere to the uh, social distancing guidelines, which here is one-on-one -on -one and staying 1.5 metres away. Mm -hmm. So are you seeing a lot of uh, personal trainers do that? Are they you know, going out into the parks and working with their clients? Yeah, the, so that, that's where like the the tricky part is in that, you know, I, I support it in many ways because it's nice for people to get outdoors, but as long as everybody is adhering to, you know, the 1.5 or 2 metre rule, then I, I think it's okay. Um, and we've got the regular PTs, like in, in Sydney at least, um, park PTs are a really popular way for people to get outside and exercise. Uh, whereas we've had to adapt and, and the Muay Thai guys, so our trainers are out there doing PTs with our members or with non-members who just want to do uh, private sessions. Um, we just have to adjust the session so th there's no pad work or um, or sparring or clinching or anything like that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the training like then? We've, uh, well, the good thing is like... Um, our guys uh, from Isan and, and they're used to training in scarce conditions or sparse conditions. So uh, they've been really um, creative in the way that they're, you know, they're setting up their training environment. So they're, they're almost setting up little um, Isan backyard gyms out in the park. So <laughs> I take the boys out in the morning with the truck and we, we put the equipment out and they set it up, whether it's tying pads to trees or, um, you know, tying ropes to different things. And they've been really creative with it. And it's awesome to, to see, you know, what they're coming up with. They're, they're really testing themselves. And I think that's also keeping their um, spirits alive too, you know, um, just being able to actually do something to help. And in the case of my guys being able to help the gym, um, I'm really lucky to have those guys doing that for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sing Payak and Palong Chong are real gems. Um, you yeah. have you started doing online training, and what is that like for you? Yeah, so we started the first phase of it for us, um, which is just free to air uh, Facebook live sessions and Instagram live sessions, and we've done that for a couple of reasons. I guess the first one is for us to um, get used to doing that. It's not something that we regularly do. I mean, we do clips here and there, but we don't actually facilitate online sessions. So um, to get the boys used to that too. 
Uh, the other side of it is we're, we're trying to we're trying to have fun with it. They're pretty dark times, like I said last time, and we really want to have some fun with it. Keep the keep the banter going and and have a bit of a giggle with our members because the community in our gym is a really important thing. We really want to try and keep a hold of that wherever possible. Um, the people are staying inside, so that they're a bit down, but. Um, yeah, having having a good laugh while we're doing it at the same time while we're learning. Uh, so, are you yourself participating in the online training? <laughs> yes, it's <That's> terrible. <laughs> so, so that, so... That's where some of the laughter is obviously coming in from. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, I'm so sore, and I think both the boys are sore. Like. We are because we're doing the sessions ourselves and we're, we're usually uh, doing two two people in the session. So one of them leading it and the other one following. And um, I, I'm a mess at the moment, man. My arms are sore, <laughs> my legs are sore. <laughs> and, um, and I think our, our members and, and friends and family are all having a – having a real good giggle at my expense watching me fall around yeah. and stuff. So it's good, man. It's good. I mean, it's also good because it's showing you're involved in it as well. Um, and, you know, maybe you'll come out of this uh, with a six pack. <laughs> I hope so, man. <laughs> but uh, it's, I, I just think it's really important too. Like I've made it a goal of mine to stay committed to doing it. Um, it's new for all of us. Like just I'm passionate about it high style of training and having to do something like this for me just makes me feel so uncomfortable um but we've got to do it and, and there's no end in sight for now this could go on for like three months six months we don't quite know yet so i think the the sooner we get into it now and, and start to adapt to it the better you know yeah absolutely um obviously since you're doing some of this online training um are you building it as a resource for the future like do you have plans like in terms of a cur cur curriculum so we we're not taking that approach just yet um that's going to come for us uh the important part is the live sessions so our guys thrive on uh, the interaction and we're really where the next phase for us is to move off uh, Facebook and we, in, in the background we've been testing and trialing things like Zoom, um, Google Meeting, um, just so that we can prepare for the next phase, which will be basically um, paid paid to enter sessions. So uh, the people can, we, we use a, a gym management software, people will book their sessions in just like they normally will when they come into the gym, except they're going to be booking to go into Zoom rooms um, and do their training from home. Um, part of, I mean, it's what keeps us going, the, the whole interaction bit, um, singing Chocolate Funny Guys as well. So I think our members will thrive off that part. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the library part will come after that. Mm -hmm. um, and then what has been the general reaction so far uh, for your members? Our members have been really supportive on the whole. Um, they, they're aware, like... The, We've tried to keep them as informed as possible as to, you know, what the situation is. And, and they can see it, like, um, in that they, they can't come to the gym anymore. And, and to, to many, that was their second home. Like, they'd see mm -hmm. some of us more than they'd see their partners and family, you know. So um, I think uh, at the moment, people are just enjoying it for a giggle and laughing at me um, being thrashed online daily. But the... Um, I think as the reality kicks in that this is actually something that people are going to have to do if they want to keep training, I don't mm -hmm. think that's quite kicked in yet. I, th I think that's going to be – that's another month to two months down the track when people start really realizing that, hey, if I don't do something now, I'm just going to go – like I'm just going to go crazy and I'm not going to be fit. I'm not going to be mentally stable. It's just going to, it's going to have a really big impact on people's lives. What are some of the positives uh, that you've experienced with a lot of this stuff so far? Uh, with the online stuff, so well, even the park, it's really, it's brought us, it's brought us back to basics. We've stripped everything back, and I think sometimes, you know, when you're in the gym, you're on the grind day in day out. You, you don't get stale. Like we love our jobs, but you know, it's it's just a routine. You, know, you come in, let's go shadow box, blah blah blah. 
Um, but now we're really having to have a bit of a think at the programming, um, bring it right back to the absolute basics so that when people are at home, they can run through it with us. And uh, when they're doing it, 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 I think it's bringing a little bit, a bit of fun back to the end user and to the trainers as well because we're, we're, we're challenging ourselves mentally. Um, and oh, I guess, oh, <laughs> uh, just, just to wrap things up, uh, was there anything you wanted to say or talk about that we haven't talked about? Uh, I just, look, it, it, it's, it's a really challenging time. And I, I said it before, you know, sending out positive vibes to everybody who's, who's being affected by it, whether you're in the gym, um, or you're just, you're at, average Joe Blow who's out there and, and really struggling because of it. Uh, but on the other side of it to gym owners and, and trainers, I think we can keep trying to, you know, push back on things like the online training sessions and whatnot. But, you know, it, it's potentially all we're going to have for the next, you know, three to six months and possibly longer. So I think the sooner people come to terms with that or look at other solutions. I think the better everybody's going to be. Um, and the, and the more you're going to be able to actually have a product that you're going to actually to, to be able to live off. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm just sending out, you know, some, um, oh, just some encouragement for people to have a crack at it. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Well, uh, I'll definitely have to, uh, tune into your next, uh, Facebook live session and, Try and do a push-up competition with you, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I can bring you in on one if you want. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, maybe we'll have to do that. Um, cool. babe, thanks uh, so much for your time. Thanks, Matt. Take it easy, buddy. All the best. So thank you, Boom and Francis, uh, the owners of War Watson at Gym, for coming on the show today. How are you two doing? Uh, we're doing good. We've good. got a house full of kids. Boom has been cooking and cleaning all day nonstop, and I've been uh, just trying my best to keep up with my freelance work. It's uh, a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, so you guys are in, in Isan, uh in um Pu Tai Song. What is it like out there? Uh how has the virus impacted your daily life? So we rent two apartments in Pu Tai Song and we com commute to the gym daily. The gym's located in a very uh rural village about twelve kilometers away. The local government came to shut down the gym right away. We have no problem complying, so we did have to shut the gym down. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to see about half of our kids. And that's been really hard on us because, you know, we spend four to five hours a day with these children, seven days a week. So for the safety of everyone involved, the kids that are locked down with us are locked down with us. And then we do have some kids that are, are at home and we haven't been able to see them. So that's been hard. Both Boom and I feel as gym owners um, that we really need to set a good precedent here. And so we're also uh, not letting the kids out, you know, washing our hands until they're raw, teaching the kids about washing their hands. It's not a common practice up here, <laughs> especially amongst the children. So we have hand sanitizers in front of the house before you go inside and outside of the house before you leave. And we've uh, bought soap and things like that and have asked them as well to wash their hands for 30 seconds. Supplies are very scarce. So I was able to, before things got really bad, buy quite a few things online. But since I was able to do that, everything sold out. We cannot get rubbing alcohol. We cannot get dead all. And um, also with so many kids uh, under our care, there is a concern that, you know, just basic ailments. We don't really want to go to the doctor at this time. We are taking the, the lockdown seriously. So we're trying to keep them safe and from, uh, you know, cutting themselves open with a fishing hook. 
Yeah. Um, have you seen an influx in the population in Isan? Because I know a lot of the workers uh, from Bangkok and other major sort of urban centers have gone gone home, if you will, uh, back to the countryside. Yeah, so we live in a small town, and there hasn't been a few, few uh, huge influx here, but in the villages, yes. Booms Village in particular saw quite a big influx, and the surrounding villages, uh, there has been a very large influx. The town we live in, uh, people, a lot of people rent, so there's not a lot of space here, but it is surrounded by villages, and it serves a lot of villages, so yes, we have seen uh quite a few quite a few people come in and uh without the regular fights going on in isan what are you know people like uh, fighters doing for money and also the gym owners well each gym is very different and i think that's important to to note um we know one gym that's really struggling right now uh, recently, they were given 10,000 baht from Siabot, which I know is going to make a huge impact there. And Muay Thai for Orphans also sent them some money and has some money sent aside for next month as well. But they have about six or seven children in their care, and they're struggling to, to put food on the table. Um, you know, luckily in Isan, we can go fishing. And what what else is available right now, Piboom, in terms of, I mean, it's not frog season. What what other things are people able to, to find for food right now, mm. other than fishing? Just small frog. Small frogs, anything. Yeah. It's not really the season. Yeah. Yeah. What about rats? Is it rat season right now? Um, not really, no. But you can't go for so like some buck at night. They find some bugs at night. Yeah, so it, right now it's it's not the best season for foraging for food. Um, there's also was a bit of a drought, and it's a bit of a concern as well too because a lot of reservoirs are drying up, which means it's harder to find fish. But we have noticed right away an increase in the number of people fishing. So I think a lot of gyms, mo most of the gyms that I know, they also farm rice. So they will have rice aside to eat and they may or may not be forced to sell their rice to buy other things. One of the beautiful things about Muay Thai in Thailand is people do really give back. So even these tiny little gyms, um, they often have a few sponsors that, that can help out in times like these. But yeah, people are, are foraging for food again. Um, so that's something that's, that's changed. And then uh, what... Are, what have you guys changed in terms of your daily routine and how are things different for you? Well, we are confined pretty much to our apartment, but we're lucky because unlike, you know, Bangkok, we have kind of like an open space in front of our apartment and a lake behind where we live. So we make the kids run twice a day because we think that it's important for their health as athletes and, and even just to combat the virus, we need to stay very healthy. So we make the kids run at times when nobody's around. So they have to run when it's quite hot because there'll be no one around. And, uh, and we do train at home, but without a ring, you know, and, and as I mentioned, we really don't want the kids to get hurt during this time. So we are taking some extra precautions. So, you know, the kids will clinch a little, but they, they know what they're doing. So they don't go really hard to make sure nobody falls and, uh, you know, we'll do a little bit of pad rounds and things like that. Just just enough to keep the kids um, kids active. And uh, we are, Boom and I will go to the grocery store once every two days. Bat and Johnson, they are fishing almost every day now. They're really enjoying that. But as they're fishing in a lake, there is a good chance the fish will run out because there's a lot of people fishing in the lake right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to keep the kids, um, you know, it's hard for them to understand, I think. And, and unfortunately where we live, nobody is adhering to the social distancing and shops mm -hmm. are still open. So they probably are seeing their friends going out and about on social media, but we're forcing them to stay home. Uh, 
um, we're really lucky though, because I think, you know, the kids, they do get it. You know, they have been listening to us and uh, we really appreciate that. What about you people? And what do you feel that's really changed here for the kids in training? Uh, it's just not the same. Just just keep them busy. Keep them, uh, keep them active. Yeah, just run twice a day and train on the front of the house. Just, just, just enough for keep them busy. Yeah, just enough to keep them busy, make them mm-hmm. tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, what are your goals now, or what do you see as being the lasting impact of all of this? Well, we do, as I mentioned, have a few kids uh, that are at home with their families. Um, I feel pretty good about our children, but I do worry about a lot of other gyms and the fighters there because, you know, gyms often keep the kids a lot healthier, safer, and more focused than the kids, uh, than, than it can be for them at home. And so I really worry about a lot of fighters not recovering from this, you know, uh, they may be you know, just go down the wrong path, get distracted by friends, lose the momentum, and aren't able to to come back. And, you know, Muay Thai is, is very competitive. So, you know, for our kids, we're very lucky because of our monthly donors, we're able to feed them and, and keep them training. Uh, thanks to the support of our monthly donors, we paid our trainer his full salary. Um, and we're really proud of that. And he's really grateful for that as well, too. But I, I think I feel pretty good about our kids. I know the ones that are with us are going to be okay. Um, and I think the ones that are home, we're in contact with them. And, and I also feel very, very good about them. But I, I do, I worry about other gyms, um, whether the kids will come back or, or even just like small businesses, certain gyms not being able to come back from this as well too um just wrapping things up uh was there anything that you want to talk about that uh we didn't i don't know people is there anything what do you think about what's happening right now Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think this is new territory for everyone. You know, we don't. Yeah, for sure. We don't really know what's gonna happen or or what's what's going on. Well, uh, thanks for taking your time out. I really appreciate it, and hopefully things will be a little brighter the next time we talk. Yes, agreed. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. So thank you, Willie, for taking your time out. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, good, man. I just came back from uh, the Can Chanterbury immigration and extended my visa today. Yep. So that was fun. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Uh, so what was that process like? How long You've been out here for almost four years, uh, almost uh, nonstop, correct? Yeah, it's been like five years now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, yes, yeah, the process is uh, pretty simple. You just fill out some paperwork, and they just want your money, so you just pay them. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's pretty chill. And um, since you rely on fighting for your main source of income, what are you doing for money now? What has changed for you? Uh, it's hard, you know. Um, <clears throat> Luckily, uh, PA, we have PA to, uh, I use him, um, he'll let me borrow money, you know, and then when I fight again, I'll pay him back. Uh, he really looks after all, everyone here so, so well, you know, mm-hmm. we all kind of help each other out, you know, with small, small stuff like meals or whatever, you know, and, um, you know, we just make it work, take it day by day. Yeah. And uh, is the camp itself emptied out, I assume, of uh, the foreigners? Yeah. I think we have one right now. Um, Philip is still here from Germany, but everyone else has gone home. And it's been kind of a process getting them home, you know, because 
travel restrictions and that too, you know? So sometimes people are, are kind of stuck for a while. But, and yeah. then... Uh, what about you and uh, your extended family or your immediate family? Because uh, your wife and son are up in um, the uh, Pet yeah Petchaburi. Pet yeah, Petchaburi. Yeah. Um, I would see. I was gonna go see them, but until this stuff really started uh, getting worse, so I decided to stay here instead, just because. I didn't want to risk getting sick traveling, and I didn't want to risk getting them obviously sick too, you know. So uh, we just Skype a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. I miss them a lot, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do and just make the most of it. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you doing to make the most of it? Uh, like my day-to-day -day routine. I just, mm. I just uh, we haven't really been training much, uh, so I just I just run, you know. I just wake up in the morning, and I've been focusing on running a lot. And then when I'm not doing that, uh, just stay in my room. It's I don't know. I don't. It's not that bad to me if I have like a bed, Wi-Fi, and food. I'm good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, daily routine is pretty chill you know I just play games on my phone and relax run mm -hmm. talk to uh i didn't be on the phone mm -hmm. i don't know yeah all right yeah that's good um are there ways that it's impacted your daily life because it sounds in some ways like it has and in some ways it hasn't well yeah i mean as far as daily life normally i'm like training twice a day mm -hmm. and have a fight always like at the end of the month and so yeah my daily life is way different now because no one's training and I have no fight coming up which is weird it's like a weird feeling to not have anything um like no I have no uh like security of like money right now so so like I said like uh PA takes care of us and lets us borrow money and stuff but uh, at the same time um you know, it sucks, like, not knowing, like, when, when I'm going to get a next paycheck or whatever. And, you know, I'm blessed to have, like, a family also back home who helps, like, my mom and dad that will help me when I need help, you know. But I'm not trying to, uh, you know, ask them for money. You know, I'm 30 years old now. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think everyone's kind of in that boat. Like, we're all kind of just you know and uh we don't know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. so and, i don't know man yeah i think a lot of people don't know and that's uh the big worrying part for a lot of people people just <laughs> don't know what's happening yeah. yeah it seems like uh as soon as you as soon as you start saying like you know something it's like how, how, how would you know, you know, you just heard something from someone else, or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would like to think, like, hope for the best, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who, to, who to believe, you know? Yeah, for What's sure. What's really happening? How would I know? Yeah. Um, and you said, uh, a lot of the other people aren't training. Um, how has it impacted the, your stable mates and the trainers? Um... Well, for our trainers, they get a little break uh, that, you know, normally they never get. Mm -hmm. The life of a Muay Thai trainer here is pretty gnarly. Like, they always work, like, six days a week, you know, work. So it's, you know, at the same time, they're not making money like they normally do as well, too. So they're kind of in the same boat as me, where it's like, yeah, it's nice to get a, your body, give your body a little break and you know, relax, but, I mean, those guys, you know, they're, they're, they need to pay the bills, too, so, like I said, everyone's kind of in this, like, little funk, you know, of, like, the moods are still, you know, happy, everyone's trying to make the most of it, but at the same time, it's like, we're not, we're not out there, like, eating nice food and stuff, like, I got, like, a box of mama noodles and some canned fish, you know, you can survive on for a long time just, just in case. Mm -hmm. So there's that like feeling of like, 
like I was talking to Abigail, I was like, man, it feels like maybe it's going to turn into like Mad Max style, <laughs> like post Armageddon. I was telling her if that happens, I'm going to have a mohawk. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. So, uh, do you have goals for yourself right now, or are you like doing any sort of like new challenges for yourself? Because obviously, not having a fight is, you know, or the fights are like big goals, monthly goals uh, in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the fights aren't really goals now; they're just like income. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not fighting for no Olympian title or nothing like that. It's mm-hmm. just the way, what I do is, that's what I do for my job. But as far as goals, um, I wanted to run a marathon this year. I don't know if that's going to happen um, now, but I've really been trying to get into like distance running, mm-hmm. <clears throat> taking it more serious, and uh, it's, helped, it's helped my performance a lot since I've uh, started to kind of get into it, and it's something I can do after Muay Thai, so and keep you strong, you know, mentally and uh, physically. So, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to do that, but, you know, who, they're going to postpone the Olympics, I guess. So yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to be running anything like that <laughs> soon. So, have you? How far are you running now and for how long? Uh, it just depends on the day. Like today I just ran 10, 10K. But mm-hmm. uh, I've been trying to bump it up. I did 15 the other day. I did uh 19 the other day i was gonna do 20 but i was done (laughs) i woke woke up late man i got stuck out in the heat and it was a long hard run yeah but uh yeah 20 i've done a half marathon now so that's uh the part of this i've gone i definitely have a lot more work to do and i'm definitely not the fastest but uh I like the way it makes you feel afterwards, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. you probably hear, everyone hears that a lot. Yeah. You know? Like, after you're done running, you just, you feel good. So, it's something I can do. And I, and you're by yourself, so you don't have to worry about getting anyone sick or getting sick or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? You just go out there by yourself and smash it out. Yeah. How how long is a marathon in kilometers? I know it's like 25 it's like four, miles. It's like, it's like 40 kilometers, yeah. 42 or some crazy shit. Yeah, I I did a marathon in San Francisco. It was maybe ten years ago now. I rem- Damn. Yeah, I trained for it like regularly. I didn't. I wasn't fighting at the time, but wanted to do something to stay in shape. And I was like, oh, I'll do a marathon. And yeah. so it was like regular running, and then like one long run a week. Um, and you yeah. build up the long run. Um, yeah. And, like, towards the end, we were almost doing marathons because I did it with a buddy. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. If you have <clears throat> if you have someone to run with, it's way better. I had uh, my buddy Gerby here from uh, Miami, and he's a really good runner, and uh, he was here, so he was kind of helping me out and stuff. It was cool. Yeah, it, I remember when I finished the... When I finished, I crossed the finish line. I did in, um, like, just under four hours or, yeah, yeah. F- you know, a solid time, not the best. But I crossed the finish line. I was like, fuck that. I'm not doing that ever again. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, dude. I, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> even, even, even doing a half marathon fucking suck. I was like, why do I want to do a whole one? But I don't know. Yeah, we'll I... See. A uh, half marathon took me like an hour, hour and a half or so. I'm not like the fastest runner either, but it wasn't. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like yeah, it's like an hour and a half for running. Two yeah. Hours. Uh, um. So, what do you think is gonna be the long lasting impact of all this stuff? Do you have? Do you know? Are you like who? Who the fuck knows? Yeah, I have no idea, dude. Yeah. Probably paranoia yeah. <laughs> after about everyone will probably be kind of like careful. I don't know. No idea, dude. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything that you want to say that you didn't get a chance to say? No, man. It's all good. Well, thank you so much and uh, good luck with your running, Willie. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> 
So that wraps up the interviews uh, with Willie, Angela, Boom, Francis, and Andrew. Obviously, what we're seeing is the virus playing out in different ways for different people. Um, the biggest thing, of course, for everyone is not only the health impacts, which which is definitely there, but the economic impacts. Uh, fighters are being sent home from gyms. Uh, members are moving away from their normal gathering places. Or in Francis and Boom's case, the fighters uh, don't have uh, economic options. The same with Willie and Angela. Um, in terms of myself, Fairtex is completely shut down now. Uh, the hotel and gym is shut down. Max Muay Thai is shut down as well. Um, so while I'm still doing some uh, work for Fairtex, I'm out of work for Max uh, for the foreseeable future. Out here in Thailand, they're imposing a curfew, uh, at least here in Bangkok, uh, from 10 p.m. to 5 in the morning. Uh, also, there's no Muay Thai or no public gatherings at least until the end of this month we'll see what happens as things progress um, of course the you know if things get better with the virus immediately there's still going to be long lasting economic repercussions which could potentially be a lot more damaging um, the structure out here in thailand is very much hand to mouth uh, people living paycheck to paycheck uh, day to day uh, definitely fighters live very, very precariously. Um, and it's uh, showing that this sort of day-to-day uh, -day lifestyle or paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck lifestyle is very much uh, everywhere around the world. Even, you know, established gym owners are feeling the brunt of the pain from uh, the economic impact of the virus. Um, so... Really what we're seeing is the virus is showing how fragile our systems are, um, especially the healthcare and capitalism. Um, people are unable to pay their bills across the world. Um, so it's a very, very interesting time. It's obviously a, a health crisis and an economic crisis. Uh, you know, we'll have to see how things play out. Obviously, uh, people need to make their own best decisions about their health um, and risks and how they want to manage them. Um, so obviously I wish the best for people and their choices and how things play out. Uh, again, I may continue with a series of interviews. I may switch to something else. Um, it sort of depends on how long COVID uh, lasts. Uh, I don't want to like overburden people with this information because it does get a bit dreary and uh, boring as well uh, you know there's a lot of monotony or a feeling of monotonous uh, to the days now um, but we'll see what happens in the future um, and if you have ideas or show suggestions things you'd like to hear about feel free to contact me um, this has been On Fighting in Thailand, the best news and analysis covering the economics and infrastructure of Muay Thai. I'm Matt Lucas, journalist, commentator, and ex-Muay Thai fighter. Make stronger fighters, make stronger people.